Hello and welcome to the Fifty Shades of Gender podcast. We get curious about all things gender, sex and sexuality, as well as relationships, feminism, the inclusive kind, mental health and kink, and all that makes us humans unique and diverse. From body positivity to body dysmorphia, it's all welcome here. If you like what we do and want to make a contribution, you can become a patron on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash 50 shades of gender, or buy us a coffee. Links are on the website. Now join us on a journey of inclusion, acceptance and respect. I'm your host, Esther Lemons. I am a cis queer woman and my pronouns are she and her. This episode is a slightly different one again. I'm answering a question, or rather a request from one of our listeners, Connie, who said, I would love to hear a podcast on the definition of terms used on the podcasts. So here you go, Connie. I hope it will be helpful to you and others. It was recorded on the 13th of October, 2021. Now let's get into the episode. The fact that this would probably have made a great first ever episode hasn't passed me by. At the time, I was thinking about what I could do as an intro episode, but I found myself overthinking it a lot and being stuck. So I just decided to dive straight in with the conversation instead at the time. And the advantage of doing this now is that I've learned more terms and I feel more confident. And I've got a feel for the most common ones used in the podcast episodes. But on the other hand, it's the first solo episode, it occurred to me, which is a bit daunting. And I also feel quite self-conscious because I don't want to get it wrong or speak out of turn. But there you go. Um, What I'm sharing is basically a combination of terms I've looked up and learned about and the insights and learnings from uh, from the conversations I've had with folks on the podcast. And it's so important to remember that just because we look up a definition of a word or a term or a label, it doesn't mean that we then completely understand another person's experience because each individual's experience is unique. And as they say, when you've met one trans person, you've met one trans person. Like if you've met one disabled person, you've met one disabled person. If you've met one woman, you've met one woman and so on. So there you go. Now on the website, there is a glossary page, uh, which you can find at 50shadesofgender.com forward slash glossary, where you can find a list of all these terms and some more as well, and some abbreviations. And there's references to the podcast episodes that cover them. So if you hear a term that you want to use, uh, that you want to look up and learn more about, you can look it up in the glossary and it will give you a link to the appropriate episodes. And other ways for you to find episodes with a particular subject or label are through the episode list, which is a table format and it's searchable. So if you want to look for a particular label or experience like trans feminine or agender, you can find that on 50shadesofgender.com forward slash episode hyphen list. And there's also a categories page, which gives you a list of labels and terms with the episodes that cover them. So you can find them easily. And the link for that is 50shadesofgender.com forward slash podcast hyphen categories. Lastly, on the categories page and on each episode page, you will also find a tag cloud. So if there are other keywords that you want to look into, they could be to do with relationship styles, neurodivergence, mental health, kink, whatever. You can link uh, or you can click on those and you can find episodes related to that subject as well. So as I go through these terms, I'll mention some of the relevant podcast episodes. Uh, So if you can't remember the names, you'll hopefully be able to find them through any of these pages. Now for the alphabet soup, that is LGBTQIA+, uh, this term, although expanded uh, since LGBT, it's by no means complete. So there are many, many letters. So this is just the tip of the alphabet iceberg, as it were. And they encompass three facets of identity, which is gender, sex, and sexuality. Uh, I've tried to explain the difference between all these in simple terms based on how I've come to understand it through having these conversations on the resources page on the website, which is at 50shadesofgender.com forward slash resources. So the letters mean, so the L is for lesbian, G is for gay, the B is for bisexual, and these three letters refer to sexual orientation or attraction. Then the T for transgender is about gender identity and expression. The I stands for intersex, and that is about physical, biological sex. The Q stands for queer, 
and some other letters as well. And the Q is is a letter that can be used basically for all of these. It's very much an umbrella term as well as its own identity. And then the A is referring to asexual, agender, and the A basically means not or no thank you very much. Uh, so notice how the labels that refer to sexual attraction, the lesbian, gay and bisexual, they're actually rooted in gender identity. Have a think about that. Okay, so let's get into more detail. But before we do that, um, there's a call for support. I want to keep this podcast going. I want it to remain advert free and I want to create more resources for learning like courses. And I have one or two in the pipeline for that. Uh, But all this takes a lot of time and energy, and I estimate I've spent about 800 hours on this project to date, which I absolutely love to give, but I also have a lot of expenses. So if you're able and willing, please either become a patron, buy us a coffee, or make a donation through PayPal. I will add a PayPal link very soon. And a special thanks to my existing patrons. You are all awesome humans and really, really appreciate it. So let's get on with it. Uh, Let's start with the sexuality labels. So sexuality or sexual attraction. Um, Sexual attraction is just one type of attraction. There are many more like romantic, platonic, aesthetic, etc. So those are the first three letters of LGBTQIA+. So lesbian is a term for women who are often exclusively attracted to women. Uh, It's also used by some non-binary folks or other gender diverse identities. And you can listen to conversations with Thea, Will and Angus if you want to learn more about this. Gay is a term for men who are often exclusively attracted to men, but it's also used to describe describe same sex or similar gender attraction, or it can simply refer to being not straight. And you can learn more about this by listening to conversations with Charlie, Ray, Jacob and Brian. Then the term bisexual This is used by folks who experience sexual attraction to two or more genders. And some perceive it to mean to be attracted to two genders, which is rooted in assumptions of a gender binary, as in men and women. But many bisexuals are attracted to multiple genders, like more than two. So therefore, there is some overlap with the pansexual label. Uh, But to learn more about bisexuality, you can listen to Alice Wilfred and Sarah, Angus, Joe. Sally, Jay, Grayson, and Jen. Now, pansexual means to experience sexual attraction to any and all genders. So pansexuals may find gender irrelevant or they're just it's just not important in their attractions. And they're basically just people sexuals, kind of like myself. And there are episodes with Sally, Jay, and Victor, if you want to listen to more of that. The A is short for, well, it stands for ace or asexual. And that's a spectrum of identities for folks who experience no or very rare or infrequent sexual attraction to others. And the spectrum of shades of asexuality include things like grey sexual, which means that someone experiences sexual attraction very rarely or infrequently. And demisexual is when someone doesn't feel sexual attraction until they establish an emotional connection. There are several other stops at the, uh, you know, on the way to the asexual destination as well. And if you want to learn more, you can listen to conversations with Mel, Bonnie, Theo Will, Katie, Hannah, Jay, M, and Dorothy. And similarly, Ero, short for aromantic, means to experience no or very rare or infrequent uh, romantic attraction. And you can listen to Mel, Theo, and Jay's episodes for that. Now, the opposite of ace or asexual, is called, it's called allosexual. And basically, that means to experience sexual attraction, which is like most people, I suppose. So that's it for the sexuality labels that are most common on the podcast so far. Next up, uh, I want to talk about, <laughs> let's talk about sex. So intersex. Um, as I mentioned, this is about physiology. It's about the body. And most people are born either male or female, but intersex individuals have variations in the development of sex characteristics that do not fit the typical male or female norms. And this can include internal and external genitalia, can be chromosomes, hormones, and I'm sure other things as well, but those are the main ones. 
Intersex is part of the LGBT plus umbrella, but not all intersex folks consider themselves a part of the community. And you may have come across the abbreviations AMAB and AFAB. So AFAB means assigned female at birth. AMAB is assigned male at birth. So rather than say to someone, oh, so you you were born a boy or you were born a girl, it's not necessarily correct. So the term AFAB and AMAB are, are better for that. So the assigned gender at birth. So basically that's that's what happens. You get assigned a gender at birth based on your genitals. That's That's how it goes. In the episodes about intersex, you'll come across a couple of terms, DSD, uh, Disorders of Sex Development, and IGM, which is Intersex Genital Mutilation. So uh, Disorders of Sex Development is a very controversial term used for intersex people, and it is actually suggested that a better alternative is difference in sex development or diverse sex development. And intersex genital mutilation is a term that refers to any non-consensual surgery performed on intersex people. Um, Parents of babies born with genital um, intersex characteristics are recommended or pressured by doctors, or they can be, to undergo medically unnecessary normalizing surgery to make external genitals appear more typically male or female. And this may also involve removing and or altering internal sex organs, And intersex people of any age may experience this, not just infants, because some people only discover later in life that they are intersex. And you can learn more about this, all of this, by listening to conversations with Sarah, Ella and Law. So that's it for sex. Gender terms. So cisgender is basically someone cisgender when their birth sex matches their gender identity. They feel aligned and comfortable with being either a man or a woman. They've never questioned it. It's never even been an issue. And uh, I guess a lot of people, most people, I guess, are are cis. And someone may be transgender when their gender identity doesn't match their birth sex. And there are other terms like cishet, which is a term to describe being cisgender and heterosexual. So that's just short for that. And then the gender binary refers to the assumption that the only two genders are man and woman. And the description has its origin in binary code, which consists of two options, a zero or a one. So it's a clear either or situation, either this or that. So going down the binary brick road, so to speak, for the most part, a trans man is someone who was not assigned male at birth, but identifies at least in part as a man and this could be a social transition of sorts. Or it can refer to someone who has transitioned socially and or medically from female to male. And this transition is often a binary one. However, some trans men may also resonate with with additional non-binary gender identities or any any other gender identities. And uh, the conversations with Charlie Kane, Sam, Ray, Charlie Orris, Lawrence, Dean and Grayson are great examples of this label. On the other hand, a trans woman is someone who was not assigned female at birth, but identifies and lives, at least in part, as a woman, again, a social transition, or someone who has transitioned socially and or medically from male to female. Again, this transition is often a binary one. However, some trans women may also resonate with additional gender identities or labels be they non-binary or otherwise. And we have conversations with Ella, Hannah, Angus, Rachel Dawson, Cassie, Cameron, Bella, Evie, Sally, Charlize, Helen and Lynn. So that was a bit of a mouthful. So lots of episodes there for trans women label. When it comes to hormone therapy, there are expressions like being on T, which means like they are taking testosterone and being on E means they're taking estrogen. And also there are terms like FTM, FTM, which is short for female to male. So that's someone who is transitioning or has transitioned from female to male, which is most likely a binary transition. And MTF, M2F is short for male to female, someone who's transitioning or has transitioned from male to female. Again, most likely a binary transition. 
So if someone identifies as anything other than or outside of these two binaries, they might fall under the umbrella term non-binary. And non-binary is a gender identity as well as an umbrella term. And it's a spectrum that includes identities between the binaries, outside the binaries, or completely separate from the binaries. And rather than thinking of non-binary as a sliding scale between the binaries of man and woman, some consider it more like three-dimensional, like a galaxy, which sounds more fun to me anyway. So some non-binary folks may be transgender as well, and others are not. And you may have heard the terms transmasculine and transfeminine. So the term transmasculine is used by people who were not assigned male at birth, but are partially or fully masculine in identity. And we have conversations with Alice Wilfred and Bonnie, Harris, Dean and Dorothy for that label. The term transfeminine is used by people who were not assigned female at birth, but are partially or fully feminine in identity. And you can listen to episodes with Kit, Harry, Eloise and Cameron for this one. Now, the following are some gender identities that fall under the non-binary umbrella. So a-binary is an identity not just outside of the binary, but completely separate from it or outside of it. It sounds a lot like non-binary and there might be some overlap. Uh, it's obviously a part of the umbrella, but it's a separate thing. So listen to the conversation with Jay for that one. Androgyne means being simultaneously male or masculine as well as female or feminine, or in between the two. This is not to be confused with androgynous, which is a quality of being both, both masculine and feminine in appearance and expression, uh, or having a neutral presentation. Agender means to be genderless, not identifying with any gender at all. But that said, agender folks may use other gender-specific labels in addition to this one, which may seem counterintuitive. And you can have a listen to the episodes with Alf, Cassian, Jareth, Harris, Jin and M for this one. Bigender means that someone has two specific gender identities. These may be binary or non-binary gender identities. So it could be man and woman, or it could be man and another identity, woman and another identity, or two different ones altogether. And you can listen to conversations with Law, Dorothy and Jen for this one. Then we have Demi Boy, which means to partially identify as a boy or a man. And folks who identify with this term may or may not use other gender labels as well. And you can listen to conversations with Jareth and Law for this one. Demigirl means to partially identify as a girl or woman. And folks who identify with the term, again, may or may not use other gender labels as well. And you can listen to Kit's episodes for that one. The more unusual ones that I found more recently is uh, one is Maverick, which is a gender identity that is entirely separate from conventional genders and gendered concepts like masculine and feminine. And it's not the absence of gender or gender neutrality, but its own unique gender identity. And I still have a bit of trouble getting my head around that one. But listen to the conversation with Jay if you want to know more about this one. And then xenogender is a gender identity that cannot be well described through conventional gendered language. And instead, xenogender individuals resonate more with things like animals, plants or objects when it comes to describing their identity as subjects that most people do not consider as relating to gender at all. And uh, you can learn more about this uh, by listening to Grayson's conversation, who is wolf gender. So those are some examples of identities that fall under the non-binary umbrella. And there are some other ones as well. And they are gender non-conforming, for example, which refers to folks whose gender presentation does not conform to binary gender norms and or their gender expression may not reflect their actual gender identity. This term is used mostly by trans and non-binary folks, but it may also be used as uh, by cis people, actually. The term genderqueer is used by people who have a gender experience that is different from the norm or the mainstream, and it can be a gender identity of its own as well as an umbrella term. And you can listen to episodes with Alan, Kyle, Genevieve, Jay and Dean for this one. Now, queer is an identity that can encompass gender and sexuality, as well as other facets of identity that differ from the norm 
or are unconventional or non-conforming. It can be used as an umbrella term or as an identity orientation of its own. I'm a big fan. I use it myself. And to learn more, listen to conversations with Felix, Rachel Lang, Genevieve, Jay, Juno, and M. Gender fluid is a gender identity that changes. It's not set. And it can change consistently, like on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, etc., or randomly and between any and all genders. Gender flux could be considered a type of gender fluid, and this is an identity where the intensity of one's gender fluctuates. And to learn more, you can listen to Jareth's conversation. Then there's femboy, which is a term used by gender non-conforming folks who fit more on the masculine side in whatever form in their identity, but present in a more feminine way. And this is apparently more about gender expression than gender identity. And you can learn more by you can learn more by listening to the conversations with Joe and Dorothy. Some folks prefer to use terms that have been around for a long time and they have got some baggage attached to it, I guess. Um, the words transvestite or cross-dresser, that's just some of them. And also the word transsexual, which is like a, an older term and it was used for people who wanted to medically transition. And um, they are quite outdated, but some folks still identify with them, like Sophie and Evie. So do listen to their episodes if you're interested in learning more about why they still identify with these terms. Another term that was an unusual one that I hadn't actually heard before was gender invert. And that is apparently someone whose gender is the opposite of their birth sex, but who, ex- who accepts both their sex and gender as natural and right says Alan. So listen to Alan's conversation with that one. Very recently, I've had the pleasure of having a two-spirit woman on the podcast, uh, Beverly Little Thunder, and I hope to expand the repertoire to include many more Indigenous gender identities from all over the world, and there are many. So I hope that was insightful and not too overwhelming, and I hope it makes it easier to understand and follow the podcast conversations. You can find out more details on the website at 50shadesofgender.com forward slash listener questions one, which is a listener hyphen questions hyphen one, where you can also read the transcript and you can find links to the pages mentioned, the glossary, the episode list, the categories page and the resources page. Thank you for listening to the 50 Shades of Gender podcast. You can find us online at 50shadesofgender.com on social media and on YouTube. Again, if you'd like to support us, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Visit patreon.com forward slash 50 shades of gender or buy us a coffee. Links are on the website. We hope you will listen again. Until then, stay curious and open minded.